The DJI RS3 Mini is a small, lightweight gimbal that can hold a heavy camera. And in this video, I wanna go through one of the most frustrating aspects around this gimbal and how I was able to fix it, but then also just some of my general thoughts around working with this gimbal and whether I think this is a good gimbal to get or not. All right, let's get into it. So the biggest frustration point for me is the way that you mount the camera to the gimbal. You have to use DJI's proprietary little plate to hook it onto the gimbal. Now, these work with some Arca Swiss products, but they don't work with every Arca Swiss product. And also this camera mounting plate is bigger. Now this is the same style of plate that's on the RS3 and the RS3 Pro. The difference is on the RS3 and RS3 Pro, you put this onto the other camera plate that's a Manfrotto style plate and the two plates together Together is what you use to be able to balance the camera. Now there's a third party replacement for this Manfrotto style plate from Fallcam, which allows you to add an Arca Swiss plate onto the Manfrotto plate, and then you could use this with your RS3 or RS3 Pro. And the reason that DJI's plates are a problem is that they don't work with every Arca Swiss style product. When I'm building out my camera system and all the products that I use together, I wanna be able to take my camera on and off between each product and not have to switch the camera plates. And so if I'm using the DJI camera plate, it doesn't necessarily fit on everything else. And so ideally for me, I want an Arca Swiss plate because that works with every product that I use. So for the RS3 and RS3 Pro, you just buy this third party plate and it works perfectly. And then you can keep the Arca Swiss style plate on your camera. With the DJI RS3 Mini, there's no Manfrotto style plate. You just have the DJI proprietary plate that fits directly onto the gimbal. And it fits on this little sled. And if you're doing vertical shooting, this camera sled is what you put on the vertical axis. So it's pretty essential if you're gonna do vertical shooting. However, for me, I don't do a whole lot of vertical short form content. I mainly shoot horizontal, so I don't need to have the vertical mount for when I'm working with this gimbal. So what I did is I just drilled a hole directly in one of the arms for the gimbal. I just mounted an Arca Swiss quick plate adapter directly to the gimbal. And now I could use my traditional Arca Swiss plate on the RS3 Mini. And the other thing that bothers me with these DJI proprietary plates is they're a little bit taller than an Arca Swiss plate. And so when you're pulling your camera in and out of your backpack, you always have to have a bigger slot to be able to fit this in if this camera plate is on the camera. So if you are just using this camera plate, it just makes the bottom of the camera bigger and bulkier, whereas the Arca Swiss is much slimmer. And Fallcam also has this really slim Arca Swiss style plate, which is what I use. And it's even half the size of your traditional Arca Swiss plate, but still works with all of the different accessories. And and so for me, this has been a huge help in actually using the RS3 Mini when I'm out shooting. And so I'll include all these attachments and all these plates down below in the description so you can check them out for yourself. And this might be a good solution for you if you do need that Arca Swiss style plate to go between all of the different attachments that you use. Now beyond this camera plate, there's a few things that are a little bit frustrating with this gimbal, but there's also some things that are really good about this gimbal. Main thing is price. It's only $369. So it's the cheapest gimbal that DJI offers, but it's still super stable. In the size of lightweight travel gimbals, while the RS3 Mini, for me, has performed the best out of all of them. It's reliable, it's consistent, and it just works well. So the camera lens that I personally have been using is the A7S III with the Tamron 20 to 40. That's the kind of combo that I've been working with so far on this gimbal, but it can hold up to 4.4 pounds. So you just need to look at your lens weight combo and be able to see if it's gonna fit on this gimbal. I've had a lot of questions on my other video that I did around this gimbal and the RS3 and RS3 Pro. And a lot of people are asking, does their camera and lens work with this gimbal? Well, if it's under 4.4 pounds, there's a good chance that yeah, it's going to work. The only thing you have to worry about is whether it's too front heavy or back heavy but the way that they designed the tilt arm there's plenty of room to put a longer bigger heavier lens on the front of this gimbal because right now I have the 20 to 40 on and I'm at roughly one on the little meter that shows you where your balance is. And it goes from zero to six. So there's a lot of room to push this camera back on the gimbal and put a bigger heavier lens out front. So let me just rebalance this real quick with a bigger heavier lens. This is the G Master 24 to 70 significantly heavier. I'm just gonna pause the video for one second. Just wanna mention that I've uploaded some new classes over on my website, The Creator Film School. So if you wanna learn how to be a solo creator, shooting, editing, and learn how to grow your YouTube channel, make sure you head over to thecreatorfilmschool.com. It's where I have all my exclusive courses and a bunch of 
extra content that you're not going to find here on my channel. I'll include a link down below in the description to where you can check it out. All right, and so now I've balanced the 24 to 70 G Master, and I have it extended all the way out to 70 millimeters, and I'm on five and a half on the scale, and pretty close to the ends of the other motors as well. It will balance something this big, but it is nearing the limit of what this gimbal can handle. So surprisingly, you could put big lenses on front of this gimbal. As long as it stays under that weight balance, you're gonna have room to balance this gimbal, whether forwards, backwards, or up or down, depending on what style of camera that you're using. So for the price and the size of this gimbal, nothing else competes in terms of what you can put on the gimbal to be able to have a travel lightweight setup wherever you go. Now, one of the frustrating parts about this gimbal is you don't have the auto lock and unlock. And when you do take your camera off and lock the gimbal down, you have to collapse the gimbal to be able to make it fit nice and snug in your bag. Now, this is just a limitation of this size of gimbal. And personally, I'd love to keep my gimbal balanced whenever I throw it in my bag, but working with this gimbal, you have to collapse it down. The solution is the half fold mode that DJI has with the RS3 mini. It's not perfect, but it is a solution. So the way that the motors lock is either in the full lock mode, where it's as small as the gimbal can get, but then there's also what's called a half lock mode. And this allows the motors to stick out slightly so that your camera can stay balanced, but it does make the whole setup a little bit bulkier. So when I've been using this gimbal, I'll keep it in the half lock mode just because I wanna keep the camera balanced when I'm out filming and I'll stick it to the outside of my backpack. So I always use Shimoda backpacks when I'm out filming and there's a lot of camera straps on the outside to be able to put this gimbal and just strap it right to the outside. Now, if I'm not gonna be using the gimbal for a while, then I'll collapse it down and just stick it in the bag because it is so small. The half fold mode is a solution. It's not perfect, but it definitely works if you are someone who does want the smaller footprint but doesn't wanna get rid of the balance when you collapse it down. Now, one of the other things that might be frustrating is the fact that the battery is not removable. On the RS3 and the RS3 Pro, you can remove the battery and have multiple with you. This battery is only gonna last 10 hours. So if you are someone who's gonna be using this gimbal for long periods of time, well, the RS3 is gonna make a lot more sense because you can swap that battery out. And also that battery has 12 hours, whereas this one has 10 hours. However, if you are someone who's just using a gimbal here and there throughout the day, then the 10 hour battery is fine. It's plenty of power to get tons of shots throughout the day, or even multiple days if you're just turning it on and off once in a while. Personally, I like the size of the gimbal and the fact that it is so smooth for being how small and compact it is. The one thing you have to worry about when you're working with this size gimbal, and it's not just RS3 mini, it's any gimbal this size, is the fact that it's not gonna be as smooth with your Z axis because the whole setup in general is more lightweight. The heavier that your gimbal is, the easier it's gonna be to be able to keep that Z axis completely smooth. When you're working with a lightweight gimbal, the RS3 mini or something like a smartphone gimbal or any of the other ones on the market, well, it's easier to bounce the camera up and down. And you'll see this in some of the footage. When I get super close to things, you'll see more of this bounce than if I was working with like a big setup on my RS3 Pro. And this is just a fact of weight and balance. When you're holding something heavy, it's harder to move it up and down with this little motion, whereas when you're holding something light, you don't notice as much with that up and down bouncing. So it is something that you have to keep in mind when you're working with a small compact gimbal. You have to really practice with that Z axis because any gimbal, unless it has a four axis stabilization, is gonna have this limitation where you'll see bounce on the Z axis. But overall, my thoughts working with this gimbal, this is definitely a gimbal that I'm gonna use pretty often. So whenever I'm making my YouTube content, if I'm doing like a story or I'm traveling, this will be the gimbal that I'll take with me because it is so small and compact and I do wanna bring other gear with me. If I was to do a project where I'm gonna be using my gimbal for long stretches throughout the day, then I'm gonna use the RS3. And the reason is the RS3 has the multiple batteries and it could fold down, keep your camera balanced and you never have to worry about rebalancing if you don't change your lens. But generally, I'm not using a gimbal throughout my entire day, especially when I'm making YouTube videos. It's little things here and there and so this gimbal is set up perfectly to be able to just have with me wherever I go and it's just lighter and less gear and the only difference than if I was taking the RS3 versus the Mini is that I just need to make sure that I have a couple extra minutes here and there to rebalance the gimbal if I do fold it down. But if you wanna see all of the differences between the DJI RS3 3 Mini and the RS3 and the RS3 Pro, then make sure you check out this video right here. It's a complete comparison that goes through all three of these gimbals to see which one makes sense when you're out filming. I'll see you over there.